A rival baseball player once said of him, he can beat you more ways than any man alive. His daring play earned him a place in baseball's Hall of Fame. To you people that I've been negligent about reading a book that was given to me about five years ago. My name is Robert Peterson, and I am the uh, author of Only the Ball Was White, which is a history of Negro baseball before Jackie Robinson. It covers the years between the beginning of the uh, 20th century and 1946, when Jackie Robinson uh, became the first uh, admitted uh, black player to play in the organized uh, leagues of baseball. Coney Island of Western New York, and that was um, established by the Broadhead family who owned the steamboat lines and owned some of those trolley lines also, uh, along with some other things in the city of Jamestown, other industries. Chautauqua Lake was a tourist mecca, just as it is now. But people came and stayed for the whole summer. The Jamestown area was represented uh, in the late 19th, 19th century by two other entries. Uh, both were in a league called the Iron and Oil League, which was a minor league uh, covering mostly small cities in northwestern Pennsylvania. The thing that was, that was interesting about the Iron and Oil League in 1895 was that, uh, that it had the rookie, uh, Hannes Wagner, who went on to become the, uh, uh, one of the greatest of all uh, baseball players. Uh, he was in his rookie season as a professional in that year. He played in uh, Warren, Pennsylvania in, in that league. So he would have played in Celeron. The Oil League went to Celeron in mid-season. Things weren't, they weren't doing very well in Sharon. And so the franchise was shifted to Celeron, and they played the rest of the season there, although, in fact, uh, that league was in trouble, too. And the headlines of August 28, 1895, says it all. The Celeron Club retires after a brief and disastrous existence. This team was an all-white team, and the first team, professional team, to play in Celeron, New York. No league was open to the Negroes for the next two years. Then in 1898, a young all-Negro team wrote the final chapter to the story of black men and white leagues during baseball's early days. The team was organized by a brash white man named Harry Curtis, who promised that we will have the strongest colored club in America if we are the youngest. One of the interesting anecdotes occurred further on after their first game, where the sporting life wrote, Celron drove home from here Saturday night, being their first home game, and they enlivened the air with singing, and they can sing as well as they can play. The Negroes are a jolly, gentlemanly crowd and an honor to the league. In the Iron and Oil League in the year 1898, the last black players uh, were involved in organized baseball in that league until Jackie Robinson came along. Black team called the Celeron Acme Colored Giants. They were quite a young team. They were none, as far as I know, were from Jamestown. I suspect that he was invited uh, to come and represent Celeron in the Iron and Oil League by the operators of the uh, of Celeron's amusement park. In any event, they played about 30 games there, uh, the Celeron Acme Colored Giants. Giants lost their first four games and finally won one on May 18, 1898. Giants took well-played game from the baseball players of Bradford Wednesday. Celeron starts upward. Such was the enthusiasm. But that brief enthusiasm was short-lived as these headlines became all too frequent. Celeron loses another. As the fortunes of the baseball team floundered, so did the degree of coverage by the Jamestown Evening Journal. The season commenced with excitement and detailed coverage, including complete box scores. With mounting losses, the coverage was reduced to line scores, then mere notes in the paper, if anything. The journal often complained, the manager makes no effort, apparently, 
to let the people know when a ball game is to be expected. Many people in the city would be present had they known a game was scheduled. One of the best games of the season for Celeron occurred on Memorial Day. The Celeron Park was formally open that day. The journal recounted, The Celeron Acme Giants and the Warren team played a game of baseball. It was an old-time enthusiastic baseball crowd, and the enthusiasm of the crowd must have been communicated to the Celeron team. For they wrested victory from the Warren team after playing the best game of baseball that has been seen here this season. These type of headlines continue to appear. Celeron again takes the tail of the Oil and Iron League. June 18th said one of the poorest exhibitions of ball playing ever witnessed on the Celeron grounds was given there yesterday by the home team when Oil City beat them 11-3. The Acme Giants won only five of their first 16 games and then went out and tried to hire some additional talent. The paper was even encouraging, even in defeat, when they talk about the Celeron team played a good game but was defeated. The Celeron Chocolates woke up yesterday and made a desperate effort to take a game from Bradford team, but their hard work was all in vain. Celeron was permanently placed in last in the standings in the Iron and Oil League. By early July, the Giants were planted solidly in the league cellar and were losing money. The prospects were dim for improvement on the field or in the box office. On July 5th, the Giants lost to Warren 12-4. And the next day, Jamestown lost 7-5. Finally, the word leaked out on July 8th, 1898, that the Celeron Giants were to disband. The Celeron Colored Giants, connected with the Oil and Iron Baseball League, disbanded Thursday. Bad playing and consequent poor patronage was the cause. The manager, Harry Curtis, disbanded the black team and attempted to raise a team from former college students. However, after a month, that team also was disbanded. Manager Fortney summed up the situation in the Jamestown area. Without a winning team in Jamestown, the sport will never be a success. And in order to have good players and get the best results from them, they must be paid at the time and the amount agreed upon. Otherwise, it will be a failure. People here want a team and baseball as a pleasure and recreation. If someone energetic enough would give it a little attention and money. This was a dreary postscript to the last season in which a number of blacks played in minor leagues. It would be 48 years from this date until once again Jackie Robinson would play in Montreal for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Segregation on the professional baseball scene would be the norm for nearly a half a century. Stated by 1898, the last traces of black players in organized baseball could be found in the Pennsylvania Iron and Oil League. The Acme Colored Giants, with an anemic one loss percentage of 163, shut down operations in midseason. With that team's demise, a turbulent, maddening period in organized baseball had finally given way to a slightly calmer but racially segregated period in which only whites could play at the minor and major league levels. They likewise referenced the last all-black team in the minor leagues was the 1898 Celeron New York Club of the Iron and Oil League. Those were the last admitted black players in organized baseball until 1946 when Robinson uh, joined uh, Montreal in the International League as a, as a rookie uh, for the... Uh, uh, farm team of uh, the Brooklyn Dodgers, now the Los Angeles Dodgers.